Have you heard of the Freak Athletes uh, Reverse Hyper? It's like the ultimate uh, thing for a home gym because it takes up like no space and it can perform at least nine functions. You can do like a... Uh... Why am I on another stream? Uh... Are you talking about like a Nordic Rack? Yeah, similar to the new Nordic Rack thing that they're okay. releasing. There's a bunch okay. of them that I've seen. But that one that Anthony's talking about is is different than that. But like it's called the Hyper like Pro. Yeah. Hyper Pro. Hyper Pro. Yeah, so you can do you know the what what is it the uh, Nordics? It's a Nordic bench. Yeah. An, okay. Ooh, this looks expensive. I haven't even seen the machine. <laughs> but like it can do it. It's like after you have a home gym set up, this is like the thing that can cover like every single leg thing you could possibly want to do uh, and see. it takes up like no space because it stands up straight okay really so cool. i'm looking at this and it says hyper pro and they're all <laughs> these are all hydraulics they're not hydraulics no 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 <laughs> no i'm looking at the wrong one. Oh, okay it's at epm performance no 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 it's not never mind not epo either where is the actual website for this thing uh, freakathlete.co oh freak Oh, thank you. Sorry. Where's the chat? Eric, did you collaborate? Freak athlete hyper. I did. Yeah. We're all shared. You know, I was Ooh. able to join our old collaboration invite from three days ago. Oh. Oh, wow. That is expensive AF. How much is it? They are all pretty expensive. But I think for this what is, you're This is getting, pretty competitive. Yeah. Like, like the idea of having a one-stop shop for a home gym instead of building out a multi thousand dollar home gym multi item yeah is just insanely Indeed. good value coop from garage gym reviews who's reviewed like every single freaking thing in the world and has a whole company behind it he's like this is like the first company that's making a home gym exercise machine it's like everything else mm. is made for a, a gym and then mm. we find it and we're like, okay, this is small enough. This is affordable enough. This can do home. Let's do this in our home gym. Yeah. Got you. So it, I will say it's got a lot of stuff that I pretty much look for. Right? Anyway. Oh, yeah. It's insane There's how many things you can do. That are so cool. There's one with a, um, I can't remember if it's magnetic or engine uh based but it's this pulley system where everything's on the ground and it has a flat pad and uh -huh. you can buy one of the it has its own one-stop shop bench that has like all the nordic stuff has all the different things but with this pad you put the bench on the pad and you can put the bar with the thing above it and now with that setup you can do any bench exercise any Bench press, decline, incline, however you want to do it. You can do deadlifts. You can do squats, uh, you know, front squats, back squats. You can do deadlifts. You can do bicep curls. Then with the bench, you can do all the things that like these other benches are doing. Now you're paying, I think the whole setup is like 10 grand or something. Jesus like Christ, that. that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's just stupid. No. Yeah, well, no. the the thing is, yeah, no, but, no, not worth it, not worth it. The I don't even I, want to hear your explanation, Eric. Absolutely not. All, I, all I'm <laughs> going from the guy that, that wants a nine thousand dollar cold plunge. Hey, what? No, I am just saying that it crazy, replaces crazy way man. more than that in equipment. Whether you think that's worth it or not, yeah, but this I, one's I mean, thirteen hundred dollars. Debatable. Oh yeah, they're like if no, you're just looking for value, time. yeah, like mm -hmm. one of the benches is ten times better value for sure. But this thing has like you can deadlift eight hundred pounds off of this one machine, mm. up to like eight hundred. But you need pounds. a subscription to do so. No, there's no subscription <laughs> for it. <laughs> I'm pretty it's sure. Just a I'm pretty sure I've seen what machine. you're talking about. And there's a subscription. <laughs> Really? No. I'm pretty sure. No, I don't think this is the same machine. Maybe not. But the Hyper Pro is really cool. I actually got the original, so you'll be able to check it out when you're here. Okay, I'll try um, it. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, I have no background because I'm on the wrong scene like a dummy. Thanks, Ash. The, uh, and then there's no ten thousand uh, dollar machine. It sounds. It's, I yeah. I understand the investment pro, uh, mindset of it because it's not. It's like it's five grand more than like what it costs to get a power rack at home. Like I get that mental jump of being like, well, if I'm gonna be getting a power rack anyway with all the weights and everything. Why don't I just buy an all-in-one solution to my problems? I mean, if you're getting a new power rack and you're like of the mindset that I'm Mm -hmm. building a home gym, I want to get a nice power rack, Mm -hmm. then you should just do the power rack. You're going to spend way more. Like a nice home gym is going to cost you upwards of 20K easy. You mean a squat rack? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Your power rack is a little bit different from yeah, squat. Yeah, like a, yeah, it's a an all different. like a like a Bowflex, basically, where they have attachments. For F- no, 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 no. <laughs> I almost swore at you for These, no reason. <laughs> the, the difference between a squat rack and like a power rack, <laughs> I was like, you is, don't deserve that. <laughs> is essentially the amount of weight that you're going to be able to put onto it, yeah. and the 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 power of the structure. So when you start moving into power rack systems. You're looking at things that can literally do everything that a gym would normally have at weights that the gyms would be able to do it. Mm. And when you start looking into those systems, you can't just buy a squat rack that, you know, a normal person would be able to use. You have to really start looking into systems that have mounting setups, stronger structures, Mm -hmm. a bunch of different attachment capabilities. And you have to start buying individual pieces that are hundreds of dollars a piece and start building out your home gym. So overbuilding is is like yeah. the start for that. Like yeah. if you if you look at any of Rogue's racks, the reason why they're so popular is that they are overbuilt. Like yeah. they are yeah. built they are built for bear. Yeah. <laughs> but like you could my probably drop a fucking uh eighteen wheeler on that, it'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> And my sister's been building it up for like 10 years now, but costing out her gym, she's like, nah, my, my gym has been a 15 year investment, investment of well over money. 20 grand yeah, to build up yeah. all of the equipment that she has. Like you just, you don't build it up Kettle all at once. Bells, right? your, your leg press, your horizontal leg press machine, your lat pull that you like it the, the list goes on and on honestly it's re- it's actually okay. terrifying <laughs> and now to kind of full circle that to have one multi-use machine automatic I mean, machine that does that 10 grand is not for bad. 10 grand that's starting to breach what is now, this here's thing, thing called eric this mysterious, I'm trying to find it. This mysterious I'm, ethernet also, thing also i'm trying to while find you're it. trying to I'm while you're trying to find it, it also um question there is yeah that's all well and good um where is it made the freak athlete one no or the $10, well i know the one. freak i know the freak athlete one is not is uh is uh built somewhere it's not built in america yeah yeah the nice thing about the freak uh, athlete one though for me was that we have the original and for only like 50 extra bucks we get to we can upgrade ours to the new version they have like a upgrade pro kit so that it's not like left behind and can't do all of the new things okay yeah so they're pretty cool they're pretty cool not bad not bad pretty cool pretty cool um yeah so what are we what are we drinking and uh why why am i the only one that cares about halloween what do you what do you mean? I what literally you wore this is my spirit box, dude. Dude, I wore my uh Unisana shirt. Both of you are, are yeah. that so subtle. You just got like one little spot. Like how I, I can't mean, even read that. I can't even see that. Hey, I can't even see that. This was it. I have this a big giant it. ghost on me. Halloween. Your ghost blend. I honest, actually, I I'm, I'm going to be totally real with giant you. Giant letters I spooky. Didn't, I didn't see it's backwards for me. Can't read it. Oh really? Remember, your for camera's in your reverse camera is for flipped, us, dude. Oh, don't you feel silly now? So we couldn't, we couldn't read it. And since when was it in I reverse? I didn't know there was a ghost. It's been in reverse since we've do- been doing this. No. Yeah. yeah yes. Shiza. Uh, 
Your mic has always been on the right side of my screen. Yeah, it's always oh, no. been that way. Oh no! I'm like oh, looking no. at it. I, I gave it. What are you? What is this? I gave Eric such a hard time for weeks about everything being in reverse on his screen, and y'all didn't say anything. <laughs> It's because we met immediately after it's we started Because we the were podcast. waiting for this moment to say, we knew "Gotcha." It was we knew it was coming. Oh my god, we're almost Since done with always. this. We're on twenty-one. Dude, we are. I was showing yeah. that y'all can see it in the background over here. The next Flaviar, maybe. Oh yeah, I got mine today. Hey guys, I'm screwed. Why? No, not mean? again. What do you mean? What is that? Why is it? Is it what empty? What do you mean? Yes. It leaked. It leaked. <gasps> no. Oh, no. Another one bites the dude. I'm ooh, Flaviar. I, I was actually looking forward to this one too. Flaviar? It's an Irish whiskey. I saw that. I know. This is the second thing in my box that is Flaviar. And this this one's worse. Man, get your dude Flaviar. Yeah, Flaviar's QC has to has to step it up like a notch. This like, oh yeah, look, you great. can see. I, I don't know if y'all can tell, but the cap is not. Oh yeah, no, I could yeah. definitely. Yeah, I, I could tell. tell. Yeah, yeah, I could I tell immediately tell. whenever you lifted it. I was like, oh, yeah. why is it aged? Right yeah, now? it looked like discolored. I was like, yeah. oh no, that leak. Well, good. looks okay, like I get okay. a contact 22. support again, and I don't think I've even Do received have, the you have twenty-two. Probably check twenty-two because maybe hopefully it didn't Dude. leak on the complete bottom half. I don't think I've even received the uh, compensation one that they were supposed to give me for the first mess up. Lame. Okay, well, I got 22. I have 22 as well, and it's, like, more full than the rest. <laughs> really? Like, like oh is gosh, y'all's like ever been knew. filled to the brim like this? No, mine has, this like, a also... little bit of space. Let's see if it focuses. See the air bubble? Yeah. Dude, I have a concern that just arose. A big concern. What's that? Okay. How? I mean, this is probably not possible, right? How much cocaine is in the, is in this whiskey bottle? For, well, for a second, <laughs> well, I'm just like, remember, some of them have been really bad. What if we've had cross contamination? No, M mis wh mm. whiskey mixes between. I, I, I would hazard to guess no. I don't think so. Just because of how this is set up, I have a strong feeling that most of this is a manual process of filling yeah. these. And because of that, I don't think cross-contamination would be my worry, but you want to know what it would be my worry? No, don't. Don't do this. They have the wrong... It's totally <laughs> incorrect it. whiskey in a bottle. Yeah. Because what likely happens, just to kind of think about it, they, they have these bottles, they have this sticker situation, they... Put on the sticker, they have the cap, they have it open. And they go through and they put all of the 22s. They they line up how many 22s they want to make. And then somebody's going to go in and pour out all of these bottles of whiskeys into these glasses, right? And then they're going to close it up. It is entirely possible that one of those bottles, vials that they had on their, their table... When they're all together, wasn't a 22 vial, and they never noticed. Yeah. And it could have been a 20 vial. And then if the next person is going through and putting those into boxes, theoretically, I could see how they put a 20 into a or 22 into a 20 or something like that. You know. So far, my taste buds have aligned relatively enough to what they're saying that I well, sometimes we've been like, wait, what, what are they getting at? What, where's that? They say this that's is in it. That's fair. And of course, I think there's a like, lot of similarities amongst whiskeys. Yeah. But I think just through pure happenstance, like I've been able to tell when we've had a rye versus yeah. like Irish whiskey versus, you know, Oh, this is a finished whiskey and we're trying a finished whiskey. Yeah, so to some degree, I would say with some degree of certainty that we're at like 90% at least in our anecdotal experience. However, as a statistical probability across full scale production to everybody, I bet you that has happened. Yeah. Mm. 
Okay, so we're we're not trying 21, which is saddening because a new Irish whiskey by Limavadi. I, I don't Lima know how to pronounce Vadi. that. They're, they're a new company. I haven't tried Limavadi. It's in Ireland. Yo, what's it's up? It's actually a place Bike. in Ireland. Sorry. Bike? Uh, thanks for the follow, sir. Or ma'am. How would I know? <laughs> oh, no. How would you know indeed? <laughs> Let's see. How do you, how do you pronounce this word? Limavagen? Limavadi. Limavadi. Are you talking about the like this doing? traditional like scotch? No, it's 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 like a uh it's Limavade. According to YouTube. Which will do better than I will do, for sure. Um Limavadi. So it was from Limavadi, Ireland, and we're not gonna get to try that, which is sucks because the uh yeah, we're very excited. I was, and particularly this I'm gonna tell y'all right now. Actually, no. I shouldn't even. I shouldn't even give any predisposed notion. Pour number twenty-two. Y'all could still okay. drink number twenty-one if y'all want. I might so, pour twenty-one That's for for our new viewer that nobody knows who this is. This oink to <laughs> oink to oink bacon person. We have no idea who that could be. Obviously, uh, no <laughs> idea. It definitely couldn't be somebody that we know. Nobody would ever use that name. No. Right. So um, that hundred percent. That name. Sometime. Last year, we started doing this podcast thing where we drink whiskey because we went on a whiskey excursion in the whiskey town of old called Louisville. <laughs> okay. And so now we talk about video it. games occasionally and drink whiskey every time. <laughs> yeah, we essentially try sweet. new whiskey every every week. Yeah, every talk Monday. It, rate it. Yeah. You can see all of our videos we, uh, up on YouTube. We got the Flaviar Advent Calendar because financially it helps out a lot. <laughs> but it fair. has been a uh, very hit or miss. I just so opened. Far. Uh, where'd it go? Did I already lose it? I just took out twenty one because today we're supposed to be doing twenty one, and it leaked all over the place. It's just gone. It's truly it just disgusting one day i had oh, good day like a duplicate and also sometimes literally the whiskey is just terrible like absolutely terrible like one tastes yeah, literally like swamp butt yeah we have a swamp uh, water whiskey that we did swamp water we had yeah. the, the infamous <laughs> robitussin episode don't <clears throat> oh, god oh my god we're tasting whiskey today whiskey today. okay have y'all have y'all nosed this whiskey yet no Smells almost like a rye. It does have a little bit of a rye smell. I know why that is. If y'all don't want me to give any information, don't I, I can say it. Ooh, it does definitely but give it, me rye. It gives me dates. I could see that. Excuse me. I could see dates, raisins. It just, it just smells a, very light. It does smell very light, though it's very dark. It is misleading. misleading. This is interesting. This is very sweet. It does have a sweeter smell. It smells like I would like it. Okay. I That is something we always like to hear. I feel like they yeah, almost always like smell like I would that. like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the smell of I, I just like the, the taste. Bourbon. I just like the smell of the taste of the bourbon. Okay, yeah. well, cheers to oh, episode 34. You did not. I did not. You almost, okay. you basically did. I did not. You basically did. I did not. Don't lie to me. So, this one is actually pretty interesting. Hmm. It's by High Wire Distilling. They are actually, so I think this may be our first Carolina whiskey on the podcast. I don't think we've done a, a whiskey from South Carolina or North Carolina yet. And I've got two that we got to do. Two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two? Because, so we yeah, have to do Rua's actually, single malt because it's incredible. Yeah. You talked about that like the time before last, yeah. I think. Yeah. And we have to do I'm this excited one. to try that one. The uh, you're frozen. Oh, Oaklore. Oh, 
because uh, I literally know the dude that is part of this. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you have to now. Folklore. Oh, my God. This is from batch number one. Oh, nice. We can't what? open this. <laughs> oh, we got to open it. We, we have to try batch number you have one. To bring, you have to bring we it. We have, to, we have to taste it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, High Wire Distilling oh, is go. out of Charleston. I actually had the luxury to try some of this whiskey in Charleston. Some of the, um, mm. not this one in particular, I think, but I've tried a few of their different whiskeys. I haven't had their bourbon yet, which this is. This is the this Jimmy is the Red Straight Bourbon. Now, High Wire Jimmy is notorious in the sense that they use a red corn for their whiskey across the board. This red corn typically has a harsher flavor, and it's that's what's giving off that rye vibe. What was that? Is that tobacco? I think it's a lot of tobacco flavor. I could see that, but I think I would attribute it more to the typical spiciness, almost like a peppery or a red pepper, oh, okay. kind of that. It's a less bready rye flavor. Like it tastes hot almost. Mm hmm. I get a lot whenever I try the red corn whiskeys, which I've, I have a few of them in my repertoire. I always seem Don't to say get it like that. <laughs> <laughs> my repertoire. Eric, my repertoire. Eric, I must remind you. On the you, back of his throat. We are drinking whiskey, not wine. Ooh, what are you <laughs> trying, trying to say? Trying to say. The audience is different. Mm hmm. Fair. Okay. Have okay. you seen Yellowstone? Have you seen Tulsa King? Have you watched the. <laughs> Any of these? Have you seen Ooh, Peaky Blinders? An episode or two. Mm. I'm just teasing. Disapp However, the Peaky Blinders is one that I want to watch. I'm going to sit down and binge that. One I thought you didn't like it. I was, I was I, going to say. I saw like one or two episodes and it didn't hook me. But I've heard from enough people that it's amazing. And it's I've really seen good. enough small scenes that I'm like, I need to watch this at some point. It's just one of those shows it where... Really uh, especially this year, the time hasn't been there for me to sit down and binge a show. I don't think I've fully watched a show that was over 10 episodes this entire year. Damn. Most shows are 10 episodes or less nowadays. I know. That's what I'm saying. I've watched. Oh, those are I the meant only per types season. Of shows. I meant per season. Yeah. I don't think I've watched over 10 episodes of a singular show this entire year, like across the board. And I want to be able to have some time to like sit down and watch Peaky Blinders and like burn through it, you know, and I haven't had that this year. If only you had like a trip coming up. Yeah, that might be one of the things I do on the flight. I'm going to download a bunch of different shows that I've been meaning Dude, to watch. Uh, before you do, just know, because I discovered this during our great power outage of 2024. Um there are some of those apps that will only let you keep something downloaded for like seven days. Oh, Dude, Ted yes. Lasso is the Ted Lasso? best show I've oh seen. Oh my in gosh, like it's so amazing! <laughs> Ted Lasso is an amazing show. I, I, I've already rewatched it. <laughs> I have too. I actually have too. One of the best shows on any network, especially over the past few years. I love Ted Lasso. It was solid. Was his name Jamie? Jamie. Anthony. I don't think you know uh, how healthy that Jamie is. Tart. Yeah, Jamie Tart. Jamie Tart. Yeah. Yep. I, I just want to be me, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Why would Such I want to be a lion? Oh my god. But yeah. So yeah. Have, I have to say what they are and make them guess. The red corn gives every single one of High Wire Distilling's whiskeys a very distinct flavor. I don't think there's any other whiskey on the market that has the same almost fructose burn that high wire distilling does. And yeah. it's very unique. And if you like that flavor profile, this is pretty much the only whiskey on the market that gives it to you. Now, has your background been red I this whole time? Say, no. no, it just turned red. Okay, just because of the red, red. corn. 
No, I didn't do it. <laughs> you no. didn't do so, it. <laughs> um, no, I didn't. So um, I'll answer your question first, Eric. I'll, I'll say something to what Eric uh, mentioned, and then I'll explain what's going on over here. Um, so we have a distillery close to us called Austin Still, and their uh, mash bill includes red corn. And mm. so I was like, that is spot the fuck on. Like yep. the the bitterness and kind of this the sweetness to it, I totally ca- totally catch it. So, not to say that it's an immediate copy. There are some very very uh, big differences, but definitely can go ahead and um, pinpoint that red corn. Now that you've said it, um, as for the red lights, you guys can't see it, but my wife um, has a cutout of a creepy face on the window oh nice and the red light backlights it so out from the front you just have a bunch of normal door normal windows and then there's just the one with the creepy face with too many teeth smiling at you so it's it you know it's just it's 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 nice it is you know (laughs) it's a little creepy sometimes i just i just i just try not to look away you know (laughs) yeah no thanks. No thanks. Oh Ash wants me to 3D print like a giant T Rex. Apparently, some oh, dude did that. Hmm. It would take six straight months. Yeah, it's of gonna non-stop take a stop printing. Wait, 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 okay, okay. So you said this, and the scope of large, you know, like you didn't <laughs> tell me a size. <laughs> Okay. The scope of large was there in my head, but not there. <laughs> so how big yeah. is this thing? Can you give me some dimensions this dude, here? No, this dude wait. 3D printed a life-size T-Rex stat- like statue thing. One to one? Yeah. Wait, wait. Life-size as in it was one the to, size one of to one. an no, actual Eric, yes. Eric. dinosaur? And it's in his backyard now. He 3D printed every this, single this part of it like and put it together. This sounds like some millionaire bullshit. Look, I mean, this sounds like some million. I do wonder bullshit. how much money. I mean, it no probably way. only it probably There's only cost no him, you know, maybe a grand. No, Eric, in plastic. I'm not, I'm not true. talking money. I'm talking time. I'm talking like you. No, 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 no. But no, this no, no, was no, no, mostly no. automatic, yeah, right? I get that. He had to do. How he had to put you, it together. No, he did this in. You said he put this together in six months, right? No, I'm telling you, if I turn my printer on now. And ran it's it got full time, for six months. non-stop printing. It that's take six, six months. months of printing. It some... How long did it take him to put it together? At least two it's years. It's 150 kilograms. So that's 150 times $13 if you're, if you're not buying expensive stuff. For just wow. the filament. Guys, that's why I'm $2, saying. $2,000. Like, normal people don't. Normal people can't print this kind of stuff, man. <laughs> you can't tell me that that's not some bored freaking millionaire. No, 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 who's like, dude, dude. It's I just really like a random printing. nerd. <laughs> no, that's crazy. No, he won the lottery or some bullshit, and he's not telling anyone. I mean, I I could see that. It's like, Nat, tell me, and this is actually an interesting conversation. Well, year by year, and I've seen a few articles about that. How much do you time and money do you think you put into your main hobby? Now or before? <laughs> First, at, at don't tell us your main hobby if, if it's uh, NSFW. Uh, well, you can. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we can. I think it would have come up by now. <laughs> well, we know what you Especially if to... it was your main hobby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like you guys come into my room and there's just like a random hook hanging from the ceiling. And it's just like, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, there's that. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. No judgment. Fifty no shades judgment of red. Whatsoever. If you ha- guys, if you guys have a hook inside your your bedroom, no shade, kink on, please. <laughs> like, whatever. Um, what was I gonna say? God damn it. <laughs> so your 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 main hobby, Nat. How much yeah. time and money do you think you put into that per year? So if you just go to I'm doing uh, per sports year? slash played on World per of year. Warcraft, 
dude, you guys know that the Warcraft thing is literally the most recent thing. It's been like yeah. two months because yeah. you guys nostalgia baited me into this game. <laughs> Worth what? Okay, time out. <laughs> time the fuck out. There has been many a time where we have tried really hard to get you to play a game like World of Warcraft in the past. This time, you guys had me on. A, you had you had me on a call Anthony, together. Anthony, you do not have I to. I didn't go ask you to play. This you were just like. <laughs> No, 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 Anthony, you're going too far. Because when I have been playing with Nat, <laughs> he talks about all of the different expansions like he played them. And then I figured out, oh, wait a second, he fucking has. He just lied to us about no, it. No, actually, I haven't played any of the expansions. I just keep up. <laughs> Honestly, like, the only expansion that I ever played outside of, out after Kata was Pandaria for, like, a second with you guys. I didn't and play then, Pandaria. Like, literally, it was like it was like it was like a week or two. I did Pandaria <laughs> for a little bit. Yeah, I played with um, a little bit with Eric. Uh, I think maybe with Robbie as well, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I um, did. Let's see. I did. I think I've played a lot of every expansion, except for except for Shadowlands. Probably Shadowlands was probably my least played expansion. I didn't play any of them, Eric. After and honestly, you want to know why Shadowlands was probably my least played expansion? Why? It's because that's around when Classic came out, and I just played Classic instead. Uh, I'm not a fan of... You know what? I'm not going to fall down that rabbit hole. I see your trap. <laughs> <laughs> I see your trap card, Yuki. Uh, <laughs> yes. You're, you know... You're you know <laughs> uh, you, okay. Just because you brought it up. My guilty pleasure of late. Has been so for anybody in the audience who doesn't know, I've been playing Magic the Gathering since I was like six. Um, and so I've always been a huge Magic the Gathering fan. When I was a kid, I like collected Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh cards, but I never really watched them and or I never really played them or kept up with them, especially after I was a kid. Whereas Magic, I've kept up with it most of my life. Like, I've I've still pl I played Magic as recently as like a month ago for a lot a long time. Right. I still get on arena every now and then and just play a few rounds with new sets. So, you said after I was a kid, it kind of like after I was a night elf or after I was a paladin. Well, I never like, heard someone you... say it that way. No, sorry. It was just like stuck out to me. I just was like, that's an interesting that's way to put it. <laughs> well, it's because you have this idea of like when you were a kid, like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon had a popular moment in history, especially True. from the trading card game and for both of yeah, those? like most people say like when I was after? a kid, you say after I was a kid, like someone told you Santa wasn't real and you died that day and became a man. <laughs> yeah, I meant it more of like the cultural movement of those trading card games. Oh, OK. At which I was a kid during that time and I was really into them when everybody else was really into them. And then a lot of people like kept up with some of them afterwards. Right. Like they kept up with Yu-Gi-Oh and just kept playing it. I kept up with magic. My guilty pleasure of late has been watching some of the videos that these two guys on YouTube have been doing. And they have been essentially, one of them is a Yu-Gi-Oh player and one of them is a magic player. My guilty pleasure for watching videos has been them reviewing the other game's cards with no knowledge of them. And they're like, what do you mean? It's free. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you can just play this shit. This is wild. This thing is broken. And then the guy's like, "Oh no, this is a terrible card." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, it's it guilty pleasure." It's you so activated fun my trap to watch card. somebody react. Yeah, I was literally watching that before the podcast while I was working out. So. My trap uh, card released did my Digimon, and he ate don't you. Don't say it like that. Don't say it like that. Not like you have other, you have vices. <laughs> you don't, you don't get to shame him. You I'm not shaming. Anyway, my, I, I no, was, he's not. He's just, no, Digimon was crazy though. Digimon I wish is Digimon still crazy. Like the fact, like when you look at evolutions in other ones, and it's you got banned. Sorry. Oh yeah, no. So it's like when you look at Pokemon, and it's like cute rabbit turns into slightly less cute but cool rabbit which turns into rabbit dragon 
And then you have yes. Digimon, where it's like cute rabbit turns into rabbit with machine guns for hands. Yes. Turns into straight up human smoking a cigar while killing people with chainsaws. Like, yes. The, the evolution yes. is wild. I love it. They, it's they so like, wild. It's like they saw what Pokemon was doing and were like, you know what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they I were like, you guys. Let's let's turn Argalox into a cigar chain smoking <laughs> badass from Absolute the New York psychopath. streets. It's like, whoa, <laughs> Bro. did that Digimon just assault and murder a guy? Like, what happened? Yes, absolutely, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> but um, all of that to say, I think the one thing that I've probably put the most time in is probably money, time effort into is is music okay so what yeah. would you what would you if you don't mind putting it out oh, into shit. the ether actually hold on like maybe i don't know it might be tied go ahead okay i, I was just gonna say if, if you're comfortable putting it out there like what kind of time investment i i, I arguably it would say you don't have to don't put any monetary figures out to the public but like time Mon- investment I, wise i could i could tell you how much <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could theorize just like looking at yeah. like, the amount of stuff that I've had to sell and or trade over the years. But um, I will say, Kiko, stop, dude, stop licking me, dude. Chill out. Anyway, um, I would say uh, time wise, I'm I'm thinking at least at least 800 to 1000 hours this year, this year. No. Uh, this year's probably been pro- the worst it's been. Uh, okay. I would say maybe tops like fifty. But like was- on average, you're probably spending a few hundred hours and five hundred to a thousand dollars a year. Yeah, yeah. So That's well, it. maybe not five. Yeah, you know, a year. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But you're you're being too cute. I need you to stop. The- Okay. Yeah, it's always interesting. I look back in on it in my hobbies, and I have some crazy ones. I would say my biggest hobby is probably volleyball. You have some crazy hobbies, Eric. Yeah. Volleyball yes. is probably insane, though. I would say easily, just to average it out, I'm probably doing... I'm going to ballpark it and say 25 and I'm probably doing that about 40 weeks of the year. Mm-hmm. So if we just take it there, let's just average it to lowball it at 20. Yeah. So we're looking at. Yeah, he's going to do the calculations while yeah. he's doing that. I'm going to rate this whiskey. Um, I'm probably doing at least a thousand hours of volleyball a year and you're Most definitely of my, doing more. You're than doing that. way more you're than that. You're definitely doing more than that. You're doing way more than that. I I agree. I think so too. I'm lowballing it. Yeah. At just like a simple multiplication of like 40, 40 weeks a year, I'm getting around twenty to twenty five hours. Anthony, in. But Andy, like you and I both right. know, it's probably closer to like fifteen hundred. Yeah. On <laughs> yeah. the last <laughs> trip we were on in an Airbnb. I had to get on to Eric like a like a parent and be like, stop playing with the ball in the house. You're going to break shit. You just hit the ceiling. We're going to have to pay for that. What do you think is going to happen? Then he goes outside and he happen? hits the ball into the neighbor's house like 50 times. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. I actually have a tournament this weekend. Go ahead, buddy. But, and then monetarily... My volleyball numbers are skewed because I plan most of my trips during the year around volleyball. And if you start to count those trips, then I put a great deal of money into volleyball. I don't even know why we're talking about this. I can't, sorry, I don't. Sorry, I meant to say I don't even remember why we're talking about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we were just talking about. I, I, we were, I we were talking guys. about World of Whiskey. Warcraft time. <laughs> And I was curious about how much I y'all never, spent in time on your main hobby. But there was I a reason before know. that that we were talking about time and hobbies. Was it because I don't know? It feels the that's workout fair. stuff. I don't. I don't know if that's the case. So, 
Nat, what do you think about this whiskey? It's okay. Really? It's all right. Yeah. As I've sipped on it and like kind of like ruminated on it, I feel like the conversation allowed me to like just like not make a gut reaction. And over time, I'm like, this is all good and all, but like, it's really bitter. Oh. And like, and like, kind of like jarring near the end. Like, the flavor palette off the top is like interesting. I'm like, I like it. But then as soon as we get into like the aftertaste, it's just like, ugh. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> oh, I think it's kind of malty. I, I, I see what you're You think everything's malty here, Anthony? You think everything's malty. <laughs> he does, but I honestly think <laughs> that. Okay, okay. So remember, we talked a, a while back about milk, uh, not milk duds. Now they have that malty center. Mm-hmm. When that center is like melting onto your tongue, there's a flavor profile that you get. I think you get that flavor profile towards the end. Whoppers. It wasn't milk duds, it was whoppers. Thank you. There it is. And at the end, when you're kind of melting that malty ganache type of deal in your mouth, there's a flavor profile you get. I think you get that same flavor profile at the end of this, towards the end, before it turns into like the after. Hmm. For me, the aftertaste is all the maltiness that you're describing. It just lingers like I just ate some candy. Do you have to? Do you have to? It is a very sweet whiskey. So, uh, so now, what would you, what would you rate this? I'd give this a three. Three? Yeah, solid three. Um, After getting us DMC, I would not (laughs) stop. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'd give it a three. I just, I'm not in love with it. It's one of those things where I know that chances are. Uh, maybe I needed to go ahead and let like give it a little bit more time, but like I've kind of I've taken in a few breaks in between. I've sipped water to kind of like cleanse my palate and come at it with a a new experience. Well, sorry, a, a cleansed palate or whatever. But it's really attractive on the nose, but at, at, after that, it has nothing for me that I really want to delve into more. And. And what would you pay for it? 40. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anthony, how do you how do you like this whiskey? I yeah, I Anthony. think it's uh mm, it's pretty good. Mm, and, uh, pretty good. Mm, it's pretty, pretty good. good. It's and rating. for the uninitiated, uh Anthony doesn't believe in numerical ratings. He gives feeling. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> mm, pretty good. <laughs> corresponds to probably a four and a half yeah somewhere on a four and a half five um i, I would say four and a, mm, this one's more of a four and a half oh, than a five yeah again. this one's four and a half. hey yeah. i'm getting okay. pretty good <laughs> getting pretty good i'm starting to i'm starting, to, starting feel to feel out the rating you know, system you're starting here to feel you. i'm just getting a little sad though because i haven't had one of those really good ones you know a damn Cook. Or a, we we haven't, in a but while. I will say some of our next ones, especially our our New Year's Eve live show, which by the way, check us out at the YouTube's and Twitch. We'll be going live on New Year's for a special podcast episode. Wait, on New we'll Year's trying, or New Year's week? Uh, one of the two will update everybody. <laughs> But we're gonna try. The, the a Monday is a thirty. Very... <laughs> but we'll. Do... That's true. But we'll figure it out. Oh That's my. true. The Monday. We'll probably do it that Monday on the thirtieth, uh, just for consistency's sake. But I have a very special whiskey for us to try. Woo! It'll be loads of fun. And we're gonna be trying it on top of a snowy mountain in the freezing winter. Oh. <laughs> Yes. Oh. Kappa. Yes. Kappa. It will warm Kappa. our soul, though. <laughs> I'm just Kappa. messing. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Oh my! But we could. So, Anthony, what would you pay for this? I would pay thirty nine dollars. Okay. 
Yeah. So I I think for me, the one caveat I'm going to put to this, I was not looking forward to this whiskey at all. <laughs> the Jimmy Reds that I have in my cabinet are absolutely terrible. They're so Ooh. bad that I re-aged one to try and make it better. You and re-aged one to try and make it better? There is yes, no mint I have a. I have a wooden oak barrel, and I essentially aged. I, I put in some sherry for uh, a month, and then I cleaned all that out, and then I aged this for about six days in sherry cask. Uh, like my own little sherry oak cask sherry oak <laughs> that helped it immensely um but i don't particularly like the red corn flavor so i'll say i haven't had a red corn whiskey that has blown my pants off yet it just hasn't happened and i don't think this one is there either but i will say it is infinitely better than the other red corn whiskeys that I tried from Jimmy Red. So I have to say it isn't terrible. I could definitely drink this. So that puts it way above a one. Um, I don't think I'd ever buy this for myself still. It's not my flavor profile, no. but I do concede that if you like red corn, this is probably the best red corn product that I've had so far. Mm. And we haven't tried, I haven't tried the Austin red corn whiskey, which I know so good, man. Nat has had that he it's says is so amazing. Good. So I do want to try that one. But this is probably the best red corn product that I've had so far. And I'd put it at about a, a two and a half, two and a half, three. I'll, I'll bump it up to three. I don't You'll think I'm going to buy this for myself, it. but I'll, I'll drink it if somebody gets it. I was fucking right. I was right the entire time. <laughs> That's right. Now, what yes. I will say is for the wonderful, earth-shattering price of 80 bucks, I'm never buying this. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they're doing with their no. costing. No. No. Yeah, I, I just don't. I don't know what they're doing with their their costing profile here, because. Oh. But why? Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know why. Now, actually, you know what might be um, attributing to this because I I'm not a hundred percent on this, but I was looking up you know Jimmy Red trying to see some of their, their details. Apparently. Jimmy, like this red corn that they're using, there was something I saw that said that it might be at risk for extinction. And so the cost of red corn whiskeys might be a little inflated because of the diminishing of red corn in general. I don't believe in upcharging for scarcity when your product also does not taste good. Sorry. Fair. <laughs> Sorry. I should Fair. probably be nicer about that, but I'm not. <laughs> um, don't apologize. Let's see. Never. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really disappointing. It's unfortunate. So what have y'all been playing this week? Oh, just to kind of correct myself. Oh. Apparently, and I don't know all of the details of this story. Maybe somebody in the comments can tell us a little bit more about this story. Apparently, what they're talking about there is that red corn nearly went extinct in the early 2000s. They had, this article says that they had two or three ears of red corn that they used to bring it back. And now they're trying to revive it. So, okay. You know, I believe the story. Um, like, it's just like, I just don't, I don't know. There's a lot of feed that people get to like attract deer uh, and bait them. And all that corn is pretty mm -hmm. red. Just saying. E <laughs> yep. I, uh, I have a feeling that red corn is actually really cheap and not that great. And uh, you're looking at some marketing 
Really, really good Could marketing. Be. Some con- Could be. <laughs> it's very possible. Oh, this is it's going. You know, extinct. it's one of those things that is possible. Let's just post. Let's just post you know? a little post about it, and everyone will believe it. It could be. I'm not sure on the details. There's a lot of red corn out there. Well, this is specifically Jimmy Redcorn. I don't know the distinctual Jimmy factors of that. Redcorn. That sounds like Jimmy Crack Corn. Mm-hmm. But it is a particular strain of I red don't corn. Smoke crack. <laughs> but yeah, I am not sure of the details there. <laughs> Google results right. I for never... Jimmy Redcorn lies. <laughs> Jimmy Redcorn lies. He lies. He sits upon a throne of lies. Okay, that corn actually looks really cool. It but is it also looks cool. like the corn like, I see in deer feed. It is blood red. Like for, for the audience who's never seen Jimmy Redcorn, it is like blood red like dark blood red it is crazy um it looks really cool it doesn't look like typical oh, yellow corn or even corn typical heirloom spirity. corn oh ash straight to corn jail conspiracy <laughs> a corn spiracy to corny jail off to corny jail for you ash um, what have what, you guys been what, playing? I'm what sorry, but what would happen if you popcorned Jimmy Redcorn? Would it be red popcorn? It would know. not be red, no. So I've been playing this game called uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Yellow, mm-hmm. some more, uh-huh, which has uh-huh. been good. We talked about that last uh-huh. week. How do you how do you like it now? Have you played Yellow or uh, since you were an adult, or is this the first time you're really playing one of the classic Pokemon games as an adult? So I have Pokemon Red, and it is in my Game Boy Advance, and I took a picture of it this weekend and sent it to you guys, because when I went to boot it up, for some reason, the save file's name was Eric. (laughs) With Savage. The spelling that you use with 15 hours of game time. I mean, it's a good game. 15 hours is casual numbers, to be fair. But uh, we went on plenty of trips together, so I'm sure I just played. Save file gone. Your... Wow. What, it, what if I captured something amazing? You, it, dude, it's red. You didn't capture anything what? amazing. No, you shush. What Pokemon okay. were on my account? I didn't Did you even check? log in. I was so upset. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm kidding. Got I was it. just laughing. Okay, Anthony, you should you should you should have just definitely checked. <laughs> <laughs> I'll 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 check. I'll you, gotta, check you can't be too point. careful with that kind of stuff. I'll, I'll report back yes. next week. Uh, oh my okay. God. But no, it's my first time playing oh Pokemon Yellow specifically. Yeah, there's a. I mean, I recognize almost everything, but of course, there's the really cool differences where, like, hey, you have Charmander now. Hey, you have Bulbasaur now. Like, that's that's really fun and cool. Um, because from what I've heard, there's no other games that do that. It's actually challenging. You actually have to level things up. You can actually lose, like, which is neat. And having it on the emulator with a fast forward mode is fantastic because it's not a super slow like game. It's just five times faster than yeah. it was. And it's just like zoom, 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 zoom. Mm-hmm. So that's been cool. I will say Wait, as... so you played red and you just said that you got all of the starters? No, I'm on yellow right now on an emulator. Uh... And because of yellow it. and its awesomeness, I'm getting get the starters. All of the starters, yeah, it's pretty sick. Yeah, I love that, and I've I've heard that there aren't any others that do that. Nope, nope. Which is so sad. Yeah, but I will they, say with yeah. uh, adult me knowing all of the programming nuances of Pokemon, which is just the. The, the nerd in me who has watched way too many videos of Pokemon speedrunners and yep. all that kind of stuff. Not knowing how to abuse the original Pokemon makes it so, so like actually a really enjoyable experience <laughs> as like a game. <laughs> but then you figure out how to abuse it and you're like, oh, oh, wow. yeah, items are broken, man. 
Oh, there's a lot of Bergen stuff in the first three. It's yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Because yeah. they use a lot of, you know, a, to you, 255 index slots with one memory and a final tail bit. And so if you get any stat above that, it, it wraps around and turns into zero and all kinds of weird stuff happens. It's, it's a lot it's a of good weird time. stuff. It's a good time. A lot of way weird to, way to drop stuff. some jargon, Eric. Hey, our listeners don't know what you're talking about. God. Anyway. Yeah, fun, fun anyway. Stuff. Anyway. What have you been uh, playing? What have you been playing? What else have you been I also, playing? I also I probably played Sea of Thieves. It's an absolute joke. I think I don't know if I I definitely talked about this maybe wow. on our like gaming stream, but they uh, you know, recently implemented a very new mechanic to the game that is like never been implemented anywhere before and it's a uh, it's crouching um and crouching broke the game so bad that they had to remove it because it uh led to invincibility um exploits and other weird exploits so yeah you know you can't get that right the first time because no one knows how to do that it's wow. not like there's any game dev in the world that knows how to implement crouching it, that's know, almost okay. as bad you know? as the new world if you try to move the browser, like the window on Windows, it locks your game state and makes you invulnerable. Like, yeah, bro. What are we doing? Ridiculous, bro. Uh, but other than that, in the game that y'all know I've been playing with you guys, I actually uh -huh. booted up Star Citizen again uh, and has been a very long time. And it was really cool because there's so many differences. Uh, instead of like going to the assigned hangar, you have your own hangar now and it's 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 your hangar and then you like summon your ship and you can summon multiple ships and put them together and you can like summon other things and then when you leave and come back the hangar is exactly how you left it and stuff like that so that, that's pretty much all i got to experience though uh because i didn't have much time for it but it's it was really cool and they really cleaned up the the ui a lot so like when you're doing ship combat, it used to get a little messy. Now they've, it's just so much better. Like they've made things, uh, what's the word? Uniform for like pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. I think where you've got like your ship in the very top left corner and their ship in the very top right with like its health and its shields and stuff. So they're like out of the way. And then you've got like your speedometer and altitude stuff, like out of the way as well. And then you've got what you're looking at and shooting in the middle. And that's pretty much it, except for maybe like some lines that help you know what ways what. So you don't get like disoriented. And yeah, and, that, and that's really cool. Oh, and you can like easily zoom in. Like if you're like scoping in to see better details, because with big ships, you can shoot out parts of them. Like you could take out an engine or you could take out the coolant system or something like that so that's been fun oh, that's been interesting it's i've been very curious because you know they had the con recently and they're about to release or well, hopefully they're about to release but um they've been testing their people have access to their server meshing with the pyro system and stuff with the jump gates and whatnot so i'm like looking forward to being able to play with that and stuff like that yeah it's been good it's been good but then there's been wow um, which has been a love and hate relationship because it's so much fun to go and do like the new BFD raid that we did or BRD raid that we did. And it was challenging and interesting. And then people leave and yeah. you don't get to actually continue and it's... complete it because they give up so early. <laughs> yeah, I think I also said it earlier i can't remember if it was while we were doing the podcast earlier before today like earlier today but it's one of wow is so good it's frustrating because it's so close to being better than it like better at everything and it misses the mark on just a number of things 
Like the anniversary update is very controversial. I don't know if y'all have kept I want to know about that because I saw YouTube videos titling that. They're like, oh my God, so yeah. many people are mad. And I was like, oh, yeah. what? It's very, it's very controversial for a few key reasons. And I think for anybody involved, the Taliesin and Evertel video really talks about it and says something that I think is key to the public's reaction being way, way over the top of how bad it is. I do think it misses the mark on a few key details. Is it because of the, is it it because of the dinosaur? Uh, the dinosaur is a huge part of it, I think. Yep. But I, I think it's more that the dinosaur is like insult to injury. Like, it, Oh, yeah, example, I heard that it you used to be able to get a less good mount for 5 million in-game gold, and you had to grind the crap out of it before it went away. Yeah. Yes. And now you can yes. buy one for less gold because because yeah. if you trade uh, the your money for WoW tokens, you can get that $90. Yeah. Dollars. But even yeah. even then, here's the thing I would say. If patch 11.5, 11.05 was amazing and had was flawless in every other way the mount wouldn't matter people wouldn't care so what are people like, upset about genuinely so there are a few key things one of them is if you go in and do your weekly quests for oh to get the, the new 20th tokens? anniversary to get the new tokens yeah which is kind of your your tracker like you do 20th anniversary thing, you get tokens, and those tokens give you prizes. Yeah. Right. And it feels very arcade-ish, and that's totally fine. It's like a little festival arcade celebrating the 20th anniversary. You have to play every single and day. And that don't part. You? Yes. Well, no, it's mostly the fact that after the first day, it becomes worthless to grind out and go back to that until the next week oh yeah so what happens is you finish your 20th anniversary stuff in like one day and then you don't go back there on your other on that character again for a week and so what ends up happening is you do all the 20th anniversary stuff and then you go back to what you've been grinding until next week and the problem i think that real that and um, Talius and, and Evatel talk about this. They're like, that really wouldn't matter if they just gave us some more stuff for a true 0.05 release. This is a unique 0.05 release in that previous expansions in a 0.05 release, they usually unlock a little bit more of the story. They build into the 0.1 release, mm -hmm. right? They the The 0.05 releases... 05, 15, 5, and 25 usually add a little quest line, add a so little bit of story, add a little bit yeah. of changes and balance things. And it keeps you kind of on that that like grind of being like, oh, what's gonna happen next? What's gonna do this? It gives mm -hmm. you something exciting. You go in for the anniversary event, then you're excited for wow, then you go in to do a little bit more of the story, you unlock and you have plenty of content to kind of get you through like two weeks of that and kind of be excited for it. The problem is it feels like, and the general perception, I'm not saying this is true or not true, but every review I've seen on the 0.05 release this time was, that's it. They just spin it all in the anniversary release, which yeah. you're done with in a day. Yeah. And now what should have been a huge patch to last you until 0.1 content wise lasts it's you done. a day yeah mm. and then you're done with it and none of that is connected so here's another great example that they pulled there are people that are playing this game that are really coming back to wow right now for the story that they are pushing in war within they're coming back for this story oh, yeah, that's that why i come back for sure metzen pushed way back in the day <laughs> and now we're finally starting to get this these pieces to it and that's really exciting and a lot of people are like that's really cool i am here for that and now they just spent months working on a 0.05 release that we're going to be stuck with until the new year 
for most of your playing time until the new year. And that release has nothing to do with any of that. It is separate entirely and has no concept or connection to the story for this expansion. And so it feels disjointed to a lot of people. And a lot of people fall into one of two camps. There are people that are excited for the anniversary stuff, do it, and then they're kind of let down because they can't just keep doing it. They get to do a little bit of it, and then they're, I'm back next week, I guess. That feels weird. And then you have the people that want to do the War Within stuff. And this expansion gave them nothing. And they're like, well, this feels bad, I guess. I don't want to do any of the anniversary stuff. And they're like, neither one of those feels good for most people. And then you add a little bit of insult to injury with some bad design decisions. Or the content that did come. For example, why is the raid a time walking raid that you can't fill halfway through, especially when you consider that this is harder than most oh, time walking yeah. raids? That's so weird. And when people leave, you have to like leave the dungeon, restart it. And I and understand that this is. Dude. Yeah. And I understand that this is kind of like the other time walking raids do this, but honestly, I feel like they should just nix that system because if Ulduar was or any time walking raid was the difficulty that it should be and had a LFR normal and heroic mode and you had these difficulty levels to them and they were difficult, the WoW community in the way that it is right now needs to be able to refill that group easily. Otherwise, nobody's going to do that raid after like a week of doing it. Yeah, the no. only Why people that are going to do this raid are guilds and they have no reason to do it because it doesn't offer tiered gear. It doesn't offer them new cosmetics that they don't already have. Most people have grinded out the Blackrock Depth cosmetics. Well, and it drops, the gear is competitive gear, doesn't it? At, at Heroic? Yeah, but most of the guilds are doing mythics. That's fair. And mm. you're not going to go in and do pug heroic so no. most guilds guess what like most guilds that i've seen on twitch that are running this they ran it once they beat it and they're never going to touch it again mm. what does it give you it doesn't it doesn't do anything you know, and that's right. really it's, it's sad good looking gear either so the crazy i mean, like, I mean it, would, it could have been a transmog fisher kind of yeah. thing where like they rehash like this some of the raid gear, no. is super cool super interesting and has some awesome mechanics that i really like in it and just Except due the to the way, seven. well, even the seven after looking into it, like I, it's a complex fight, but it's, it's entirely doable with the right group, but you have to be able to refill so that you can get the right group. Who's willing to stick around and like learn the fight, plan it out and learn yeah. the fight. And the problem is the way the system is designed right now, no pug is going to get through black rock depths for a few weeks. Every guild is going to do it. They're going to put out guides. People are going to read those guides and people won't do it later because they'll be like, this is too complicated for no benefit. Dude, so, for lackluster reward, so what, for sure. Yeah. What's crazy to me is that right now, WoW is really fun mechanically. The gameplay yeah, is great. The challengingness yeah. of the raids and stuff is really cool. Yeah. The rewards are shit yeah they're just all over the place. eric and i did There's... zek there the other day we duoed it it was really hard it was really challenging it was really cool we got literally nothing you go and do raid progression happened, you get literally nothing I do, yeah I and i was exactly telling anthony happened, while we were doing it after we did it why that happened and that's it's a because mistake because people abuse that people system. abuse it from the from before but yeah. the problem is that system should never have been abusable Zekvir mm -hmm. should just drop loot on a weekly basis, similar to the normal raid yeah. or something like that. Easy. And the question oh. question mark one should drop you one piece of loot every week at the heroic raid level, right? They're about equivalent. It's like a two-man normal raid and a two-man, you know, heroic raid. And it's super fun and it gives you a heroic piece or a normal raid piece and you call it a day. And they, you can only get one a week. You can't abuse that. 
And 616 is near heroic level gear anyway, so you have to do the harder the, version of Zekvir to get it. The Delve, the Delve 616 gear in the vault is it's what so ruins weird. pretty so much weird. everything. 100%. It is an I easy actually thing think that is one of that the gives problems. really high gear. And then everything yeah. else is challenging and hard and doesn't give you anywhere near as good of a gear reward. Yeah. But I think, I, they, I do they, think they are, the 616 they are, they are definitely pandering to the fact that they know people are finding it harder and harder to get into guilds that actually do content together. Like, also, but I, see, I, here, I, I can, and here's I can tell the, you full stop that like most people who actually come into this game for the first time, when they join a guild, they're like, oh, this is cool and fun. But there's no unless you're unless you're already of the mindset where you know that you're going to be creating a community within there, you're not going to be engaging with them in the way but that here's, you But here's here's the problem I have with that though, Nat. I think with a few design changes and this is just me and I talked to Anthony about this earlier, I think with a few small design changes, they could push the game into the right spot and keep most of the ideologies that is in retail wow that make it Dude. less socially like connected mm. i think there are some things that they could do that would just fix all of these issues Wait. and it wouldn't prevent the game from being like oh i can just jump into a raid i can just jump into mythic i can do all these things i feel like there's so like that's the frustrating part for me Dude. is that i feel like they're so close to perfecting a lot of these things right now and they're just missing it by a little and because of how little that distance is but how big the impact is it's just you feel it it's, it's frustrating Nat, yeah Nat just gave me a crazy idea that for like first time mm -hmm. i've had this thought what if guilds were okay. like actual guilds right now guilds are like a small community you know just uh -huh. larger than the size of a raid. What if a guild was like the thieves guild, you know, uh, and it was 5,000 members, no cap, right? And within the guild, uh -huh. people wanted to climb the ranks and they wanted to become like the top. They wanted to be in like the S tier raiding group, but they had to work their way up and within, you know, the lower groups. And you just have a huge pool of people that have a you know maybe a similar play style or something like that and the management maybe comes from the game not from random dude that's in charge of things you know it comes from almost like the corporation you know the the thieves council you know whatever type of thing that yeah. that would add a whole nother layer and kind of solve some problems where it's just like I, I i i think something like that could be cool i think i've replaced most of like right now i do most of my heroic rating and stuff like really with like a community that i that just had a cool guy and at the end when we successfully did the raid he was like oh i'll just add you all to my community and they just whenever a bunch of people are on they're like they hey do anybody want to do the yeah. raid and they just create and a group it. and that's everybody it. there is added to the community whenever they're next like every time they successfully finish a raid they add everybody who was there to the community because you just beat the raid obviously you're good enough to do it you can stay yeah. pretty much is what they say yeah and so yeah. like stuff like that is really cool when you find it it's just finding that right now that it's, it's nigh on impossible I will say that I'm working my way through the heroic Narabar Palace. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a cool, like the the fights are like <sighs> design is never has, has never been an issue for this game. Oh yeah, design rating is, is the the rating has always rating at the heroic and mythic levels have has always, in my opinion, been just really close to like a finely tuned machine. The team I, that does the raids mm. and the mechanics outside of a few edge cases, they mm -hmm. create fun experiences. I'm not saying Fair. they're always perfect, but, but they're fun. They're fun. Yeah. They do what they should be doing. Yeah. 
I can see that. I think it really comes down to, in my opinion, if there's a team on the uh, at Blizzard who is like the retention rate team, mm-hmm. they're the ones that are screwing the game the most. Because yeah. every mechanic that is designed with the intent of keeping you in the game, forcing you to be in the game longer instead of making the game immersive and enjoyable enough that you want to be there longer they're the ones fucking up yeah because every mechanic where it's like oh but you could just do more of this to get this that's the problem that's the problem we don't need that it's predatory nobody and do you know how many hours people spent in classic wow and classic wow had none of that like got it i'm not saying everything was perfect in classic wow but it required none of those retention mechanics to keep people playing. Everybody just wanted to do the cool shit. Yeah. I'm not saying all the cool shit was fun to do and like there wasn't grinding or that there weren't other things that were like not entirely fun, but you had to go and do it. But there weren't mechanics built into the game designed with the intent of we're going to drain every hour out of you to make you want to do this more. Because it's what, it's what stops it's what stops me from eventually... But I, I can already feel like I'm like kind of petering out with this game. Like I can feel it. I'm like, mm, this was fun and all, but I can't put in the time necessary to like get it going the way that it's supposed to. Yeah. And it's never been the the striving to even be in the in the group it's the people that i'm with in the group like yeah, yeah all i want to do right now is yeah. like do the raids with you guys or something like that like that's yeah. that's yeah. really fun yeah they're they're fun the raid, themselves yeah. if there was yeah and if there was eight what, what sorry no if there was like seven more people seven more uh equivalent nats anthony's and eric's in the same group then like yeah, yeah. sure we can like, we could figure it out but like with seven more people comes seven more schedules. Yeah. It's and, it's hard to do. Maybe yeah. like one day too, we could have a Tap Haven raids, you know, and just invite <laughs> the community. That but would be cool. I, I don't think I'm is, ready to scream at people like that. <laughs> don't worry. I'd, I'd be good. I'd do it. <laughs> but the, um, He's like, no, don't worry. I got it. I got it. The It is one of those things where I... Everything's said and done. I, I've been. Re- I think WoW's in a really good place right now. I think it's the best it's been in a long time. Um, is it perfect? No. But that same statement always just claws at the back of my mind. It has my favorite mechanic to do in gaming. Like I think I was doing it the other night and I was raiding heroic, and we did a two-two-six raid. So there were only ten of us doing heroic Nerevar. And I was sitting there and it was me and another healer keeping everybody alive and everything just got into a flow state and we're, everybody's just doing the mechanics. Everybody's just meshing together. You see like everybody moving as a group and it just like all clicked. All the neurons were firing. All the dopamine was rushing. We were getting like perfect heals off. I would heal this guy. That guy would instantly heal the other guy that was dying at the near same time. Like everything was just popping off. And like, it's so satisfying because it's like one validating. You're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This isn't a group where we have six healers and I could theoretically like do nothing. It's like, no, me, if, if I stop healing and, or this guy stops healing, we're all dead. We're right? all dead. And yeah. if the tanks mess up or that if one DPS dies, we're like, fuck. Right. We have so little room for ever, if, for error everything's just lining up and everybody's flow like in a flow state with these bosses mm-hmm. and it's just like click 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 man there is nothing there's no gaming experience that really highlights that. that that's no. even close and True. that's that's I was in gonna, part I was battle that but no you're right <laughs> yeah in part that's why i'm like oh yeah I don't know. The game's in such a good state right now. Just knowing my history, I'm like, I'll when 11.1 comes out and they release a new raid, I'll probably run through heroic in 
I'll probably do the heroics for this whole expansion. And then if they start tapering off or the new expansion isn't good, then I'll be like, ah, oh, whatever. But for the time investment you have to do into heroic at least and to get your AOTC, which I think is just a really it's fun experience. Ridiculous, man. Well, for the AOTC, it's not that ridiculous. If you don't do mythic, you're good. You can pretty much do the heroic raid at like the gear we have now. And you don't need to get any better, and True. it doesn't it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, yeah. For you're right. mythic, you have to sit there and grind heroics week on end. You have to do mythic plus. You have to do all of these upkeep things. You have to make sure you buy all your flasks. You have to grind money to get your potion, like all that kind of shit for mythic. That's too much time investment for me. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> unless we as a group get seven other people and start doing it as like a ten man that we go in together on. That's just not something. It's not gonna happen that's going to happen for me unless we sit down and do it as a community. But for the heroics, that's well within reach because we can already do it. Yeah. And so to sit down and be like, Oh, if I get 40 hours of play time or 60 hours of play time, you know, every time they release a big patch that I get to go and get my AOTC for the new raid on, Right now, WoW is in a fun enough state to where I'm, I think I'm getting my money's worth out of it to do, to do that, you know? Mm. Like that's, there is no game that offers that experience that I got from doing the heroic Tin Man. Like there's just no other game on the market that does that for me. So. Heard. I haven't been playing anything, guys. I'm just oh. going to tell you straight up. It's just well, been WoW, unfortunately. Well, I feel like maybe I mean, it's also because I haven't been, I've been playing it too much. That's fair. I mean, it's in a good state right now. Like, there's no shame. I mean, there kind no of shame. is. Hey, I, I will say there. <laughs> I I think I have found one of one of my plain games. My Steam Deck comes in tomorrow. Oh. Um. There is a game that I am looking forward to, and I want to talk about because I know we've played one of these games together. And I don't know how much y'all remember of that. It was back when we were all in college. Um, so on October 31st, BioWare is releasing Dragon Age The oh, Veilguard. No. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've been playing Dragon Age since I was a young a lad. A young lad. A young a lad young back lad. in the day. Barely above. Barely eight years old. And some would say... Old. <laughs> yes, the memories are lost to time. Some would say, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so I absolutely loved the Dragon Age games uh, for the most part. So Dragon Age Origins was, oh my gosh, a classic. Dragon Age one, uh, 2, fantastic. I loved them. So for the audience who doesn't know, or if y'all haven't played them, they kind of play a lot like Baldur's Gate 3, right? It's usually a turn-based game. Now that changed with Inquisition. And we played Inquisition in uh, college. I don't know how much y'all remember of that, but it became more like a smite type of play style where you have these abilities, you use these abilities, and it's kind of like a third-person mmo pseudo tab location target type of deal it kind of played like guild wars 2 in in how you did things um a dragon age inquisition was very different it wasn't bad but it wasn't as classic as the originals the story was still pretty good but i i went through and played a lot of that i know i beat that one i think the Dragon Age games are really, uh, have all been very different, unique, and exciting. I actually, this is going to be a hot take. Internet, don't crucify me. Like, it'll be okay. Oh They'll boy. survive it. Don't do this. I think that Bioware might, in general, be better at creating characters, just that characters, means. just their development, than Larian. I love Larian. I love Bowser's Gate 3. Game of the year, easy. Out of Gate is amazing. Wait. However, I think Bioware in general creates better characters. 
Not yeah. saying their games are better. Not saying their mechanics are better. Not saying that their choices are better. Just that their character stories are a little bit better. I think Larian has a little bit of the uh, fuck me because I'm a side character vibe. And Bioware has a little bit of like the I'm cool and awesome and you should be interested in the story that I have. Um, and, that's fair. And that, that's, that's fair. That's like, fair. These are right? all valid that's points. Fair, right? These are all valid Tell points. Tell me which Larian character doesn't try to fuck you after 20 minutes of talking to them. Look, man. But it's also easier to do that when you it's have like easy. a linear story versus a story that changes based on what you say or do that's fair i am not th again not throwing shade to larian they did uh they they created a masterpiece in Baldur's gate 3 the storytelling branches are wonderful i am not by any means arguing that their game is not more complex because it is it's just that i do think that the bioware characters have a lot of fine tuning in how their character develops over the story that is definitely because they don't have as many branching paths so they can like tweak it a little bit more but i tend to like the characters in bioware more like i'm more invested in their storylines than i am in Baldur's oh. gate 3 or other larian games sorry i'll talk about it later okay but yes, oh, just, Veil Guard is coming out, and I am super excited because it comes out uh, on the 31st, which is, of course, on Thursday, mm -hmm. which means I will be able to play it and get all the reviews, and I'll probably download, and that'll be something that I play on the Steam Deck, hopefully. Incredible! It, during the flight. So you just reminded me that, um, as y'all know, are very, very, very aware I generally prefer mechanics over story for a game. I'm like, oh, you gotta, yeah. I, I want the bike riding to be fantastic. Now, I don't think I've had a I chance to, to talk to you guys good. about the, uh, did I, I don't think I had watched it, but, but we talked about how Star Citizen showed the first like hour and 15 minutes of their single player Squadron 42 game. Yeah. Squadron 42. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I started watching that and I was like, yes. First off, they did a great job of showing people this so that they know whether or not to buy the game. Because there was like maybe 45 minutes probably of story and cinema and maybe um, 30 minutes of you playing the game. And that's an important thing to know before you buy the game. Now, the way they do it, I'm actually interested because it is so much more of a movie than a game. It's like, it's like, okay, this is a really good movie. And by the way, when action happens, you're the hero. You get to save the day. You get to do the thing. And so far, you know, there's not like, oh, you're going to actually spend like 15 minutes watching a thing and then two hours collecting useless junk in a zone before you unlock the next zone, which is completely unrelated. It's like, no, no, no. Amazing movie. Awesome action. Amazing more movie. Awesome action. And I'm like, that is a good way to do that. And that's like something that I know you're going to hate this, but I was so enthralled with the story of God of War. And then I had to do all of this BS in between more story bites. And I'm like, if you're going to do epic, awesome God of War story stuff, please just do more of that. Let me do the fights. I don't want to go solve the puzzles and collect all the things and upgrade my armor. I don't give a shit. Movie and action. That's it. Like, that's a great combination, <laughs> I think. Movie and action. <sighs> Yeah, I think it's um I think it's one of those things where we are at a time kind of going forward that especially for popular games there there needs to be this kind of AAA divide and AAA isn't doing this yet. Okay. AAA 
game developers have enough money, time, and resources that they can do cool things with how they catch all of the possibilities of players. And what I mean by that is they can go in and say, for like a Tomb Raider game, they can be like, hey, do you want to deal with craft? Like, here's the mechanics in our game. Check which ones you want to interact with or give us like you can skip the interaction of this entirely. Right. If you don't like the puzzles, the puzzles just are auto solved by your character. If you don't like the story, you can skip the cinematics. If you don't care about the dialogue, you can skip the dialogue. Skip the whole game. If you don't care. <laughs> just 100%. Just don't play. Just don't play. The, you know? the, this is, this play. is something where there are also the people who play through some of these games who mechanically don't want to deal. Like a great example is like Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn, Dawn or things like that. They mm -hmm. don't want to do the fights and mechanics of like the Tomb Raider they style just game. They want to watch the show. They just want to see the storyline. They love the characters. They love the idea of the world. And that's what they care about. So what do they do? They have a story mode where you interact with very little of the combat. There aren't extra mobs everywhere. You see a mob every mm. now and then. But when you do have to interact with them, it's just super easy. And AAA developers especially, I feel, have the capability to start broaching in to the idea of tailoring the experience to whatever player they have. Unfortunately, I don't think that'll be doable for a long time at least until we have more tooling at like the developer modding scene for like Unity, Godot, and things like that, mm -hmm. where people build this tooling out for other developers, which currently doesn't just, it happens a little bit, but not to this degree to this yet, extent. but I think it will. I think we're still like five to 10 years out for that. But AAA developers have the resources, I think, to start broaching these ideas, and they're just not. And I think that's because... They're just on their high horse still. Dude, it's of like also money, my man. experience is what I'm designing for the game. And this is how I think the game should be played. Therefore, this is how you're going to experience it. And I'll give and you a difficulty that. slider. I don't know. To me, because. most of them aren't like what you just described. I'm sure there are some, but to me, most of them are like still how many of the features of the last really popular game can we put in? How much Skyrim can we make this? How much Witcher no, 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 3 that's can what we make this? Like, that's not... No, I'm not saying that they're doing that. I'm saying they have the capability to start breaching in to that great design that we're talking about. They aren't doing it. I agree. I think no AAA the, developer is doing it. I correctly. think one of the potential reasons that they aren't doing it is because too many, like, you know, too many chefs in the kitchen. Oh, Squadron 42 has a lot of people working and contributing, but it has like one leader, right? Well, Chris Roberts is so, like the director, I think, basically. I, I, I actually think sure just from true. us being in the developer world, my conjecture would be that it takes more work for senior staff and they don't have enough senior staff because junior staff is cheaper for AAA developers. So like mm -hmm. I can pay 50 junior developers instead of one senior developer. I can give teams of 10 of them. I can now have teams of 10 design 10 different or five different systems for this game. Those yeah. systems are going to be so separate, non conjoining and so different in how they act feel interact because though like i just paid 50 people and broke them up into groups of 10 if you want to have those teams be even better and create 10 system or five systems that interact with each other in a way that would do something like i said where you can turn them off have systems of integration be able to interact with it based on a player by player you know basis now you have to have a team in on top of those. It is a much more senior team. They have to know the inner workings of each system. They have to be able to capably deal with all of those. Yeah. And then I have to pay them almost what the entire team is worth for like one of them, right? Because I can hire that like 
AAA developers are starting junior developers at like less than 50k. Yeah. And one senior developer at a triple A develop development company, they're like, no, I'm leaving unless you give me 250 to 300. So for what it costs five junior developers for one senior developer, like I can tell you right now, every executive on the board is like, I don't care about the inner working system. We just need to have it because these other games do well. And like, that's how it is right now. Like, that's my conjecture. That's what I think is happening. You have an exec that's like, I'm not paying for that middle level. It doesn't, like, they can live with it, you know? That's what I think they're saying. Mm-hmm. I honestly would also tend to believe that, yes, it's a money thing, but it's also like, it's a comfort thing. Like, why would you? why would you ever... Why would you ever consider putting more stuff on your plate for the consumer when the entire point of your company is to make you more money? I, that, I, seems to, that seems to be the mindset of most. For AAA, I do. I, I believe that's the mindset for sure. Yeah. I'm not saying that's that's not the right mindset. That's not the right mindset, but it, it is, it is, it is what I see happening. Mindset. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. If 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 we were talking about a, a company that ca- didn't care more about money, then why would WoW ever put in cosmetic mounts that you can buy? Yeah. Right? Why not have cosmetic the same cosmetic mounts put into the game that you can earn, which people will then want to spend more time in your game for? Right? No, 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 right? no. No, no, one of them is obviously better for the life of the game. And one of them gets you so much money that it's not even funny. And one of them's better for the consumer and one of them's not. (laughs) That's absolutely insane that that thing exists. (laughs) Like, I mean, it's a cool amount. But the fact that it's ninety dollars, bro. Uh, yeah, it's it's insanely bad. Insanity. It's bad business practice, to be honest. Like, no, no, it I'm isn't sorry, a bad sorry, business it's not practice because business, it's been very successful. You're, I'm, I'm wrong. That, I'm wrong. That mount made them. Here's the thing. That mount, I, I would go on record saying that if I had to guess, that mount paid the salary of every developer who worked on War Within single-handedly for the time they worked on War Within really? by itself. I you think guarantee it was that you, successful? Oh, 100%. If that mount didn't make them over a million dollars, I would you're be sur- absolutely surprised. surprised. Yeah. yeah, And I almost guarantee that it made way more than that. You have to remember, a mount from years ago, one of the first mounts they ever released, Back when the game had half of its current player base. And it made more money than Diablo 4 has to date on sales. That one mount way back then, this mount made enough. Like, it's just wild. It, you know what's it, even it, crazier it, though? Look at it. What? It's yeah. a giant dinosaur. They have That's had a big this old dinosaur, man. They no, no. They have been sitting on this since Battle for Azeroth forever. They oh, have been waiting to release game. it until they had the right number of players to make the most money off of it. Yeah, because they made that model this is in a BFA. reskin of a previous mount. Yeah, or they they I literally they made, made it in BFA. BFA. I, no, I'm speculating. Yeah, I'm speculating oh, okay. that no, 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 no. This, this was finished, not reskinned, finished. By someone oh, in BFA, and they decided it's not the right time to release it to make the most money off of it. Let's wait. Well, Fucking just just from man. thinking about how a lot of the art design process, like I used to watch this guy on um, Twitch a lot, and he would do 3D modeling, especially when I was practicing Blender every day and like getting into more 3D modeling. I used to watch this guy on Twitch who used to work for Blizzard. And he talked a bunch about 
how he was taught to do process in Blizzard and like kind of how it worked. And when he would do 3D modeling for Blizzard in particular, and most companies do this, this is not just a Blizzard specific thing. Usually what happens is they create this layering model. And this is graphic design in general because of how digital art works, but it, it's for 3D modeling too. They'll create a base model and they'll usually go through and create 20 to 40 different variations of every layer. And all of that is kind of turned in and whoever's above you, your senior director or something like that, will go in and pick the model that they want for then. But all of those reskins and variations are kept for future reference. So what you're saying, Anthony, like I think is true, but I don't think it, I would wager to guess that a lot of the work was just done as the initial artwork and they were like, oh, if we ever want to do reskins for this, we have 40 different options and maybe we'll release it again one day when people yeah. forget about this one and we have a bunch <clears throat> of influx of characters. Like, I don't think it was. Well, it's just fun speculation. I think it was intentionally was say, done. I was going to say that on the opposite like, side. Like, I think you're right. I just think it was less predatory. I think it was like the business yeah, practice yeah, that was just fun speculation. how art is done in the industry. Does it? I was yeah. just having fun well, I, conspiracy, I right. conspiracy theory. On the other spectrum, conspiracy. though, it's like yeah. they were thinking, what is the largest mount we can make without it being completely obnoxious? Because this I mean, costs $90. It needs mounts, to be right? But yeah. this one's bigger. How do we make it bigger, but yeah. not too big? Oh, long neck, yeah. really tall instead of yeah. really wide. <laughs> you know. Long neck. People love more unique bigger mounts yeah everyone can because see from a mile your away. mount <laughs> like the mount doesn't really mean anything anymore because of dragon right and i'm not saying this is a bad thing i'm just saying dragon riding's fun but the mount really doesn't mean anything the they only thing it does out, man. it's a trophy that you get to show off while you're sitting in that main area and I, guys i'm not a big like i i like to flex whenever I do have something, but like it's not enough. Not anymore. No. Here's the thing. There is nothing in wow that you can do right now. That is a cool flex. <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> there just isn't there. There's it's literally, just, it's just not going to happen back in the day when we were in burning crusade. Yeah. How many? Uh, let, let me let me look this up because I. I you could me... wear something that was like I am impressive because I did this. Now you can't really do that. Yeah. There is a certain gra certain gravitas to any task that you have completed. Yeah. So let's see. Um... One of the things that bothers me is that like there's really cool cosmetics in WoW that I want. And similarly, even in like Sea of Thieves, there's cool cosmetics that I want, but still, I'm not going to like, I would like to get them, but I am not so compelled to get them that I will just keep playing the game until that happens. It's more like if it happens, awesome. But if not, well, whatever. Like they got really cool See, like, anniversary that, stuff. A yeah. There's a problem with that. How so? Yeah. So, for example, the Sunwell Plateau, Kill Jaden, just for reference, kind of get a feel for this. There were over 10 million people that were subscribed to WoW when Kill Jaden was released, the Sunwell Plateau, the last raid boss in the Burning Crusade. Uh -huh. Only 377 guilds. Completed Gil Jaden. I, I think you love this stat so much. <laughs> <'Cause That's, I've... laughs> that, uh, I mean, that's fair, but it's insane <laughs> to consider. And here's the thing. It was less than that for the, the um, Kel'Thuzad in WoW Classic. It's just how it worked, how the release schedule worked. Do you know, they, they, he was only there for... Two and a half, three months. 
but everybody before, wanted... before Wrath of the Lich King came out. But he was and so cool. he it was so difficult to get done with that raid that it wasn't like Queen Anserac where people were like, "Oh, I killed Queen Anserac on heroic." Oh, I killed Queen Anserac. So many people have killed Queen Anserac on mythic that it's insane the amount of people that have done it already. Right? The only thing that matters is the race. The first few weeks who killed it first yeah you get that back from, uh, then from go ahead back then just the fact that you killed him put you into a group of people so small in comparison having just a piece of gear from that guy was the biggest flex because nobody on your server there were less than one guild per server that completed kill jaden because you were there were you're the closest thing to royalty. Yes. Like that was awesome. And it's not because Kill Jaden was like insanely hard. It was mostly a time investment thing. I, but like that's all like MMOs are. Like that is the flex. Like you did it. Other people couldn't stay around and couldn't put the time into it. But and I'm not did. saying that makes them better. It just that is cool. The 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 fact that you're part of that club made it special. And that doesn't happen in current day WoW. That doesn't happen in the re re-release of WoW Classic either. Like WoW Classic was amazing and I loved it, but because the game was already solved, people had been theory crafting about a release of classic again, what would be the best thing to do. Because of all that, it was a solved game. There's different. no mystique. There's no mystique. Yeah. We're not going to get these 377 guilds. You can never take away the fact that they did something that nobody else could do with no knowledge. There weren't guides. There weren't anything. They just did it. Leroy. That's cool. Yeah. Leroy. Leroy. Yeah. The best, best videos. One of. But... <sighs> But yeah, I am I'm excited for the new Dragon Age. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All the way to the back. <laughs> All the way back. We we're, we're nothing if not consistent. consistent. We're going to come back. We're going to we're going to get there. I don't know how long it's going to take us, but we're going to get there. Oh god. Well, friends. Yeah. I don't I have anything else to say. You want to go play some WoW? <laughs> The, I mean, I wish I'm right. about to go do some gloom oh, no. haven. Gloom haven. Gloom haven. Gloom haven. Yes, we are. But, we are almost done. I haven't talked about gloom haven in a while. I play it weekly. Uh, we're. Wait, I think we only have it. like 20 encounters left in the possibility of the game space. Wait, so are you gonna like? Are you gonna stop playing? We're gonna hundred, so we're gonna keep the keep the group. Uh, we're hoping that we'll yeah, have mind. a Frost Haven or something, but we're probably gonna keep the the gaming group and switch to another game after we hundred percent Gloomhaven. But we're probably gonna hundred percent Gloomhaven um, before we move on to another game. Garbage, oh. hot garbage. Yep, 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 yep. Shall okay. leave us. To our d own devices. You disgust yes. me. Uh, oh, some some sad news. I'm going to talk to the guys about uh, a reschedule for next week because I won't be here on Monday uh, next week. He's so, abandoned us. Yes, I'll be in. Uh, I'll be in Vegas. <laughs> fun times. Doing Vegas things. Yes. Dis disgusting. Like fighting people. Like um, fighting people. Wait, what? I'm going. I'm going for the judo world champs. So I'll, I, I, I'm going. No, there to I fight. understood that part. Anyway, continue. <laughs> so I'll talk to the guys. We might get rescheduled and do another live show sometime this week if we get some time. Um, otherwise, I'll see you when I get back. But maybe. Yeah. Either way, we'll uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Be good to yourselves. Goodbye. Peace. I said goodbye.